Well, a few weeks ago, uh, we showed you planting corn. Now we've got a different operation going. We're applying the nitrogen. If there's one thing I want you to learn on this channel about corn, it's that corn loves nitrogen. That's simple enough, isn't it? Pretty much true, right, Dad? That's right. It's, corn's got to have nitrogen if you're going to get any real out of it. Now, when I was a kid, we applied the anhydrous ammonia, which is NH3 for you chemists, but we applied that before we planted. Now uh, we've chosen to apply it after planting. Looks like sometimes you mash down some rows here, Randall. Turn around. Yeah, you don't look too close on the end rows. They kind of get massacred. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, you think that's worth it because applying the nitrogen later is closer to when the corn needs yeah, it, right? It gets yeah. more benefit out of it than if you apply it early. Some of it's gone before the corn can use it. You apply it right now, see, it's corn's up here almost half knee high. It'll really help it get up and get going. Yeah, this is when it needs it. Yeah, to, uh, to make an ear. Then. Now we look out across here, and now we always call we always say that corn looks a little bit yellow. Now to a viewer, it's probably not yellow, but it's it doesn't have the same deep green right. Right. that it will have. After a week of this nitrogen is on about a week, while well, you'll see that getting darker green. Yeah, and, uh, gaining its color. It takes a little bit for the roots to get in where the nitrogen are because we just put them on right between the rows. So it's hard to imagine perhaps that the, the roots are clear out there going to the middle of those rows already. Yeah. yeah. But I wonder how far that nitrogen actually shoots out toward the row itself. I don't, I don't know. I don't know either. It shoots out of the knife both directions, but of course the knife's buried. So it probably is in that trench mostly. We're trying to keep it in that trench and cover it up. Yeah, it spreads it. Now how deep do you go, Randall? How, does, how, how deep do you apply that? Probably six, seven inches. Okay. It kind of varies, <laughs> but you uh -huh. try yeah. to have it about the Now same. do you apply the same rate all the time or do you vary that like you do some of the other stuff? We are still applying flat rate of ammonia. Okay. There's a lot of guys going to variable rate Okay. and going by, we spread our dap in the spring and it's 18 percent nitrogen so some okay. guys are varying their anhydrous by the spread map where they put on more dap okay. with variable rate then they're backing down their ammonia okay but we're flat rating on so far yet we have the capability to variable rate but we're not doing it it's not doing it yet okay The ammonia comes out of the tank through these valves up to the regulators up through here. So these individual hoses are running down here to each tank. Now I'm going to go down here to the bottom and you'll see this little hole right here. This is right near the bottom of the shank. It'll squirt out both sides. You should be able to see through it. It'll squirt out both sides of that. This stuff is legitimately dangerous. It's uh, it's really cold. I'm not sure what the temperature is. Some of you chemists can probably help me on that. But we always use these special gloves and special goggles. Anytime you turn these valves on, anytime you adjust anything with this thing, it's all sealed. They notice they turn the valves off on both sides. I'm standing at a distance. I'm not getting very good video because I don't have the goggles. Katrill would say Randall has his PPE. I think we're ready to go. That's filled with liquid. And the way it stays liquid is it's under pressure. Right. So that's the chemistry of it. And as soon as we release the pressure, it will boil and come out as vapor. Um, or, you know, the liquid, it, hopefully it stays liquid through all those pipes, and then by the time it comes out under the ground, it vaporizes. It runs up through the cooler, and that helps it turn, uh, the sticking up there is the yeah. cooler. And it helps keep it a liquid. So you want it liquid. You want it liquid when it goes in the ground, yeah. And the reason is for uh, better metering, right? Right. Now, this stuff, not only would it burn you if it hits your skin, it would also burn the corn if it hits the corn, right? Right. So we wanted to do a little demonstration here, and, and it also, I mean, I tell you, if you get it up your nose, it, it makes you cough and do bad. You may hear that from the cameraman. <laughs> but we wanted to do a little demonstration here. That's why we parked here in the weeds. Um, Randall's going to turn it on. 
I'm gonna shut my cab second. fan off first. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna turn it on for just a second, and you're gonna get to see it squirt out. And uh, then the cameraman's gonna have to take off. I'll have to escape. It's headed right toward me here. I intentionally stood upwind so that the wind would blow the fumes away from me. May not have been the best video angle, but it's the best I could do. It's kind of dissipated now. Now you saw it squirting out. It's hard for me to walk behind, you can see it here. Now you see that coming out of there and you think, oh my goodness, we're losing it all. But that really is just a little bit of the vapor. The liquid stays under there really well. Now this was planted with a 16 row planter and this anhydrous applicator has 15 knives. So that means this one row out here doesn't get anything in between it. So Randall's not necessarily able to use the auto steer. The reason is the planter is uh, pull type and on the side hills and everything it can drift from where the tractor is. If it's good flat level land he's able to use the auto steer. Oftentimes he has to compensate for any of the movement of the planter. So he does a lot of hand driving, he says, on a lot of our more hillier soil. I mean, this doesn't look too hilly, but it doesn't take much for that planter to, to move. This uh, rig is not pull type. It's mounted at the three-point hitch, so it'll stay right behind the planter. Just getting just a little bit of those fumes really takes your breath away and makes your eyes water. It's not good, but see the sacrifices that I'm willing to go through to provide you with quality video experience. Soil's perfect. It crumbles nicely, yet it's still moist. Good start on the corn so far. They've got an almost perfect stand, uh, but if it gets much bigger, it's harder for the ground clearance to handle it and also you can kind of knock this corn over a little bit and it'll still recover. Well, if it gets a whole lot bigger, it'll break it off at the ground when you hit it. So it's a lot more resilient when it's young. So each pass is 40 feet. And these rows are a quarter mile long. This is a 40 acre field, I believe. Now this tractor, for planting, you might go back and realize that it had duals on the front. They've taken those dual wheels off so that they mash down less corn. Oh, we got one of those plugged up now. Those two rows? Outside two. Are they, are they, uh, are the cutters not in as deep or? Well, by the wear, by the shiny on them, they're deeper. It ought to be helping. I don't know whether the sealers need to slid down the hill a little farther. That seems to be the only difference I could find. Well, it might be. Maybe, Maybe their arms walk tight. a little better. Yeah. But you can't hold them tight. They're hard to hold tight when they're on the curb of the shank. Now see, for our viewers, this is interesting stuff because it's just this amount of detail. You would think, oh, you just get out of this big rig and drive. But that's not how it is. You, you, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work the same. It does look like those two are up, are up there, although in there in the middle, there's one that's up like that, too. Yeah. The tractor carries the center section. Yeah. And my gauge wheel is here in the middle of my wing. So the center section pries this wing tip up out of the ground if it's too low. And I think that that changes the way the sealers work whenever so it's critical to keep that center section at the right height. Okay when you refer to the sealers you're talking about the two discs on the here. back. Yeah. So basically we have the, the, the front got the cutter, cutter here on the front. front cutter and that's supposed to cut the trash. Right. And then we have the knives themselves yeah. that inject the anhydrous and then you have this sealers which is supposed, supposed to, close to throw the, dirt over the top and keep the, the ammonia yeah. from coming out of the train. Or help help it anyway. Yeah. That cutter's just not going on the ground. You know, 40 or 80 feet, I don't know how you calculate that, but it turns out not to be a large percentage. Got the supervisor here with us today. 
I'm not sure which was most dangerous, Dad, the anhydrous ammonia or the poison ivy. <laughs> I guess I'll know that tomorrow. Yeah, we're in heck today. <laughs> Here we are at the station where you get them refilled and stuff. So this is Dad's empty. I'll walk after the lefty. Now I don't know which one it is. Be while in big ones. 56 or any of them big ones. There's two different sized tanks available. It's always been hard for me to tell the difference. Good! Oh yeah, right there. Yeah, that way I'll have a neat name if we need to leave. Yeah. You know, when we leave, we they can still run or whatever for a little bit. I see, so they're all... Uh, Got several oh, out reserved. I think I've got him five out here. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Now, over the years, you've applied a lot of anhydrous ammonia. Yeah, I have. I've been burnt with it twice. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. One time I was working with the quick coupler where the hose, if you happen to have a hitch pin break, the hose will pull apart. There's that coupler. Yeah. And I wiggled on it, and all of a sudden uh, the uh, anhydrous came out. And I, I guess maybe I, I don't know how, how it was, but uh, it soaked me in the front and uh, uh, my chest and all through my clothes. And I had goggles on, which was very, very fortunate. And it just cracked those goggles like a windshield cracks, you know, whenever, it, or just splattered them. And, and probably done that to my eyes if I hadn't. Yeah, you'd have probably been blinded if you hadn't had the goggles. I wouldn't doubt it. And then another time I had a bolt broke on one of the knives and it was hanging back. So I stuck my foot under it to, uh, I had it shut off, but it's still dripping a little bit. Yeah. And I stuck my foot under it to push it forward so I could put the bolt in up above. And it, it dripped down on my shoe and went through my shoe and took the hide off of my foot inside my shoe. Wow. And so I had to go to the emergency room that time and uh, wore a boot in for several days and couldn't get that wet. Had to put it in a grocery bag when I went outside. <laughs> but I put it, I was still putting on nitrogen the next day, so I guess it didn't hurt me too bad. Yeah, but it burned a hole through. It been a bit leather shoe. You always wore yeah, good it, stiff leather, leather shoes. A good leather shoe, uh, but it didn't burn a hole in it. It just soaked through it. It just went penetrated it right away and I didn't know it that I, my, my foot was hurt uh, but that evening uh, probably two or three hours later I was eating eating and uh, my supper and uh, I got talking about it and I said the thing still stings and that's when I pulled my shoe off and the sock tried to take the hide off too so we oh decided I better get something done about it now I remember one of those two times. I believe it was the other in the quick coupler mishap. You even with those goggles, you burned your uh, your eyelashes and eyebrows. Yeah, I expect I did. I don't don't recall that. One maybe. of the things I remember is you said that you were uh, you found that how important eyelashes were. Yeah. You said that uh, you couldn't keep a dust out of your eyes when you didn't have any eyelashes. Yeah, that time I went home and uh, pulled my clothes off and got in a shower and sat in there for about an hour running cold water on me and uh, that's about the only thing that'll take that anhydrous out is water okay if you put water on it why well, then it nullifies it you know and speaking of that they actually have a safety tank on the yeah. a water tank that's on the side of this uh, uh, anhydrous tank up here and you can grab that hose and let that water out on you and uh, that'll stop some of the problems you know if you get it on your face or something so if this stuff is so dangerous, why do we use it? Well, it uh, it's the best thing for it. Get the most benefit out of this. This is 82% nitrogen, and uh, the other is not that much. A lot of people have quit using this and are going to a liquid form where you have less danger. You know, yeah. don't have the gas. But we're still using it, and uh, it's not. it won't hurt you if you're careful with it. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about two instances in 40, 50 years of using well, it, probably. at least 30. 
Yeah, and I, I mean, you didn't. It's not like you've spread every acre. Tom, Tom spread some. I've spread a little bit. I don't know that there's been any other incidents. I think. No, I don't know anybody in our family has been burnt with it. Other than the, those two that you have. Yeah. Now, and once in a while, you get a nose full of it. Yes, it cleans your sinuses out. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually a freeze agent. We call it a burn, but it uh, actually like putting kind of like putting dry ice on your skin or something. It, similar to what they put in a little arm, a little cancer on your arm or something yeah. to, to yeah. freeze it. Now we used to do this with an open station tractor. Yeah, that didn't work too good when the wind was in the wrong direction. Yeah, because uh, we saw in the video here how it kind of comes back up out of the trenches. And and by the way, we didn't use those closers back then, the yeah. sealers. So we had a little more coming out of the trenches, and if the wind was just wrong, you could you could be getting a nose full all the way through the field. And there's been an occasion or two when the hitch pin would break or come out, and you'd pull the hose off. One time we pulled the hose out of the wagon. It didn't, the quick clipper didn't work. There's a wagon set with just anhydrous squirting out of that pipe up to the top there. That, and that time you, you don't try to save the anhydrous. You just kind of well, watch it. Actually, I did. I came in from the back of it where the wind was coming with me. Okay. And got up there and shut the valve off. Now, how much is a, a tank of anhydrous like that? It'll run four or $500 a ton. I think there's about up toward two ton in those big wagons. So it's probably close to $1,000 worth in that wagon. He applies 140 or 150 pounds per acre. Now is that of actual nitrogen or is that, that of the solution? That is actual in what he's made. Okay. You need to get in the tractor and ride with him around. I will a little thing. bit. I wanted to get some supervisory video here. <laughs> now it used to not be, you know, even back when I was doing it, it was speed sensitive. It just put out a set amount. Yeah, or and also heat and cold sensitive. If it's a cold day, you wouldn't put on as much because okay. it just wouldn't be as much coming out. And, uh, so now it's uh, it compensates for all that. You have a, a system on there that that actually puts on so many pounds of the end per acre, which is much better because of the morning. You know when it's cool, you wouldn't be putting on quite as much. Afternoon, then it'd be putting on more. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it works a lot better with this system. And we got a distributor uh, cone up there that all the pipes go in and. And that way each knife is getting the same amount. Yeah, early on we just had kind of a little, uh, I don't know, it was a distributor, but it was not very high tech. And Yeah, it's just kind of a little manifold, and and actually the knives on the outside probably weren't getting as much as what they were on the inside, closer to it. Yeah. But we did use the same length of hoses for all of them. We had to coil the inside ones where they close. Okay, yeah. so the hoses, and that's probably still the case, right? Yeah, we still use the same length of hose. Even though it's 20 foot or more out to the outside ones, you use that same length hose on the very innermost knives. Yeah, that's the reason you look like it. a lot of hose on that toolbar because some of that's coiled up just to be the same length, more or less. Okay. We're putting it on now, side dress. I guess it's better, but it does sometimes get uh, kind of rushed uh, when you're planted corn and it gets up like this, needs it on real bad. Maybe you've had rains and you didn't get your beans planted. You're still planting beans, but then you need to be putting anhydrous on too, so. Yeah, yeah, you can, you, it's kind of more stressful. But this year we got the corn and beans all planted, so we're gonna get this anhydrous on, looks like pretty good shape. The weather affects everything we do, whether we plant or not, or whether we, <laughs> do this or not or whatever we're doing we we the weather depends on that i mean your actions depend on the weather and then uh, of course the yield depends on the weather it can't control that you really think then we're a little later than you would like to be to apply this anhydrous yes i would like to side dress it as soon as i can see down the rows and tell where the rows are at okay so basically just uh, three or four inches high yeah or less because when it when you mash it down at that age it doesn't hurt it near as bad. The, the new stalks that come back aren't near as far behind as what these will be. Okay. That's interesting. I never really thought about that it would come back at all. When it's smaller, you don't mash down near as hard on it. Yeah. When I it's this it. size, you break it plumb off and it's 
Yeah, it's, it's one thing to bend it, but it's another thing. Once that snaps right there in the stock, there's no way it can recover. Now, how close are you to being finished? Are you half done with your crop here? Not quite. If we have a good day today, hoping to pretty bit of put a dent in it, and maybe get to halfway today. We didn't get our beans planted in time to get started on the side dressing whenever we wanted to. It's always a critical timing situation here. Is, very, uh, very, and that's a, the, the way that we do it. We use this planter to, or this tractor to pull the planter and the anhydrous bar. So you said that you used to use the Deer 8410 for this job. Yeah, and that uh, let, when Dad got done with these pre-emergent bean spraying, he would plant beans with this tractor and I would start side dressing with 8410 and we'd side dress and plant beans at the same time. Okay. Well, the past few years it's worked out where he was still spraying because the ground got right all at once and he couldn't yeah. get his spraying done ahead of time. So then he was still spraying, so I stayed in here and planted beans. Then we had this tractor free, this 335 free, to because it wasn't on the planter, so we decided to put it on this anhydrous bar. So 8410 got a break. Because that 8410 would romp and stomp with 11 knives, but when you drop the other four for the to side dress behind the 16 rail, 8410 had a big load. So 15 so knives is all it wanted. 15 knives is four and a half was all it could pull in. It just working it to death. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like the 335 hardly even knows it's there. Well, yeah, it knows it's got a hold of something up a hill, but it's just it, I can be a lot smoother with a tractor with another. 75 horses. Probably save a little fuel too because you don't have to run full throttle. I think so. Using four, four tenths or a half a gallon to acre right now. Funny thing is I think Johnny uses more than that to mow with the bush hog. Probably because you're four foot at a time. Yeah. Your acres per hour is not near as high. It takes about an hour for me to mow an acre. Okay. Well, right now, at this rate, we're putting on 23 acres an hour. Okay. At this speed. So you could be burning uh, 23 gallons an hour and still be better than me. Uh, right at nine here, going down the hill, where it's not pulling. Yeah. When it starts pulling again, we're up to 12. 12 gallons an hour. See, that's amazing, the stats you got on this thing. But the, the gallons per hour, doesn't affect near as much as the gallons per acre. Yeah. It uses, I think, significantly less fuel than 8410 did because it's not using near as much of the rated power. Yeah. I don't understand exactly how all the fuel economy system works. But, but it's also running at a lower RPM, right? I mean, it's, well, yeah, we're, we're it running was, at 1870 now RPMs. What yeah, uh, What's the max cruise. RPM on this thing? Twenty two hundred probably. I got my crew set at 1850. So it's set to for the wide open on my throttle to be 1850. Okay. That's what I use to help control my speed and the gear up throttle back theory saves you some fuel too. Yeah, this is up my favorite bragging hill of all times. This is where I got to push the semi truck out that time. <laughs> With my bare hands, I might add. Now, you're not going to run over my little truck now, are you? Not supposed to. If you're not in the corn rows, we're not supposed to hit it. Well, let's hope I'm not. <laughs> the windows so dirty, you can't see out of them, probably. I like to keep them loose enough that they, you don't want them falling out, but you, I'd rather break the knife bolt when I catch a tree root or something, or, some, or something that, instead, I, a lot of break times I'll shank. break the whole shank or else break the bolt that holds the shank in the. Are those hard bolts? Or are those they're grade They're grade fives. Because it would seem like they might be kind of a shear bolt kind of concept. 
Right, that's what you want them to be, and a lot of times seem to break more expensive stuff than bolts. You see all the dripping here, that's the condensation coming off those hoses. You can see the frost still on the manifold there. Yeah, and this is all the extra coiled hose that Dad was talking about, so that we have all the hoses the same length. And then when you run only 12, you have your other planters 12 rows wide, so you only right. run 11 knives with it. Is right. that where you turn off the extra yeah. knives? Yeah, I change four valves on each side, and then I change my width and my Raven brake controller, and away I go. Four on each side. Do you run two hoses to each? Two row, two hoses to the outside, because we run 11 knives in 12 rows, so the outside rows gets a double shot. Okay. So the this one here is the outside on 15. It gets a double shot. And then the one up there is the outside on a 12, and it gets a double shot. But when I'm running 15, 15 then I shut off. So basically opening three and closing one. I got you figured out. To swap back. So, so here's the example. We have actually two separate hoses or two separate holes. This one shoots out, and that one shoots out. Now, these don't have holes on the side. These just shoot straight down. No, those are the old style knives there that you were showing earlier. Oh, okay. This is a new style? Yeah, they, where they, they, just they seal better. Yeah. Actually, I think that would work better. They don't have to have the uh, crossbar up the top either. Right. This foot helps. It does disturb a little more dirt, but it helps it to seal better because it's got more loose dirt to work with. Okay, and so let's look at the old style. The old style, these are the ones we always use. They have this little flipper up on top, which you would think would help seal it, but it really didn't provide as much help. We had a few of those left, so I decided I just will wear them out because they're just sure. laying in the shed. So, how long does a knife last? I haven't replaced any knives yet this, this year. This year, but I've instead of replacing them all every year, I've decided to run them till they won't seal or till I wear them out. Theory instead, just replace them one at a time. Replacing them one at a time as they need as they're needed. Well, Randall, we're done with this little field. Got this field done. I say little. It was 40 acres, right? Yep, got it. 35.78 acres here. On my monitor. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this. Um, it was a little bit different. It's not your typical planting and harvest. This is just some of the other work that has to be done. Still pretty high tech. Randall, thanks for showing us around. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Check out our website at tractortimewithtim.com, and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Tim.